very dim. How dare you? Say, that's a good trick. You mean to look like a ghost? No, to get all that clean laundry. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mr. Boris. I thought I'd give the ghosts around here some competition now that you reopen the house. Always the death of the party, aren't you, Larry? <laughs> no, just scared up a little business for Dr. Carroll here. <laughs> Hiya, Doctor. Hello, Larry. Say, Nan. What would you say if a ghost asked you to dance? I'd say that's the old spirit. So why don't we? Excuse us. <laughs> so you know this song, huh? Uh-huh. How about singing it? Not a ghost of a chance. Oh, no. Come on, up you go. <laughs> Nights like these bring back memories that wandered away. Stars that gleam bring a dream of two hearts that were gay. Skies on fire causing rainbows from heaven to fall. Love's desire always near so that I can recall one starry. Night. Two young people were dancing one starry night, and I saw them romancing. A million thrills were in his eyes, and his glances possessed her. A million dreams were in her eyes, he caressed her so tenderly, stars gleaming bright. All their love in its glory I can't forget How their lips met As they kissed he knew They'd be sweethearts forever Their dream came true One starry night Nan, I've got a wonderful idea. I'd like to give you guests a break and announce my engagement tonight. That should be thrilling. Who's the lucky girl? You are. Oh, no, Larry. Let's not get serious again. Can't we be happy just being friends? I don't want to be happy. I want to be married. Now, don't tell me you're in love with someone else. If I were, you'd be the first to know about it. Uh, may I? Oh, Larry, you remember Steve Randall. We met him at the Carters last oh, summer. Yeah. Oh, yes, the writer. What shall it be, dancing or conversation? It's only fair to warn you that if I concentrate on one, the other suffers. Then let's talk. Want to know why I invited you down here? Mm -hmm. Because you write such a wonderful mystery story. <laughs> oh, curses. Just when I thought I was beginning to make an impression. Well, here's your chance. As you've probably gathered by now, this house is supposed to be haunted. You want me to look into the legend? Oh, it's much more than a legend. Upstairs is a room. We call it the Blue Room. Twenty years ago, my father was found dead there. How did he die, do you know? We were never able to find out. The police finally caught it suicide, and the room hasn't been opened since. Nobody's lived here during all those years? Nobody. Not until my stepfather persuaded Mother to move back. Now, I don't know whether I can solve your mystery or not. But at least you've written a swell first chapter for me. like this coming way out here in the middle of the night. Oh, it gives me the creeps. Let's go back. Oh, relax. This is our big break. And I think it was darn nice of Nan to invite us. Yeah, but why up here? <laughs> <clears throat> Cheerful little number, isn't he? Yeah, he looks like an advance agent for a Mickey Finn. <clears throat> hey, Dracula, how soon before we get there? No hurry now. Much more hurry when you come back. I don't see why we couldn't audition the act someplace else. I know about this house. It's haunted. I read about it in the Sunday magazine section. You did what? Well, somebody read it to me. But I know it's haunted. It was called The Mystery of the Blue Room. Oh, and it's got it. goblins. Stop it. Thought. We're not going to stay there. We're taking a 3 o'clock train back. 3 o'clock. That's the hour when they strike. For 20 years now, they wait. Who's they? The evil ones, the spirits that haunt the blue room. <laughs> hmm. 
Mr. Ballage, I'm afraid my attempt to initiate the ghost mansion didn't go over so well with your wife. Ghost mansion? No. Larry, I wish you wouldn't refer to it as a ghost mansion. I'm hoping that all the stories about the blue room and about this house will be forgotten after tonight. I'm afraid not, sir. If you'll excuse my saying so. What do you mean, Edwards? Well, in readying the house, sir, during the past few weeks, I've noticed many disturbing things. Like what, for instance? I can't exactly explain, sir, except that the house is haunted. Superstitious bunk. Edwards, I'll bet when you were a kid, you once saw a mystery play where there was a sudden clap of thunder and the lights went out. <laughs> Boy, that's what I call service. What do you suppose happened, dear? Probably the power line. Get some lamps, will you? Certainly, sir. Well, you're not scared, are you? A little bit. Oh, darling, I'm awfully frightened. Judging from that music, I'd say the pianist is, too. I say, old man, can't you play something a little more cheerful? Larry, have you got some matches? Frank! What? Look, there's nobody at the piano. Player piano. What is this, a gag? That's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Oh, Frank, can't we have some lights? Of course, dear. Edwards, where are those lamps? Edwards! Oh, this is ridiculous. Someone's playing a trick on you. Excuse me. Oh, what made it play? Let's not worry about that now. Where's the orchestra reader? Here. Will you have your boys play something, please? Sir. Come now. Fair stop. Is this the surprise you had in store for us? <laughs> no, that will come later. <laughs> I'm sure it will be simply grim. <laughs> <laughs> What's all this about a surprise? I've invited some entertainers down tonight. Three girls I used to work with in a nightclub. Oh, you mean to say that you used mm -hmm. That was the season when all the debutantes were singing for their supper. But Dad soon put an end to that. <laughs> Big pardon, Miss Nunn, but some friends of yours are on the way up. The gateman just called. Well, that must be the girls. Excuse me, I'll be back in a few minutes. Little Morgan. Mm. Queenie! Queenie! Shh, don't let Mother hear you calling me that. How are you, kid? Oh, just oh, fine. Geez. Good to see you again. Come on in. Sure. How was the trip? Fine, I guess, but a little spooky. Yeah, it was so dark, even the owls were flying by instruments. <laughs> Edwards will show you where you can change. Edwards? Not Jeeves? Gee, a real butler. How long you been playing here, buddy? 30 years, madam. 30 years? Gee, that guy's really got a good agent. Who are the three girls, Nan? Interested? Oh, no. Just curious. You'll find out. You're interested in her, aren't you? You bet. Since she was that high, I hope to marry her someday. Larry. Hmm? You can't marry her. What? I said you can't marry Nan. Now, wait a minute. If Nan and I want to get married, neither you nor anyone else is going to stop us. Believe me, Larry, I know what I'm talking about. You better listen to me. Doc, all I want from you is pills, not advice. Let's go outside. I want to tell you something, my boy, and when I'm finished, you'll see why Nan couldn't possibly marry you. May I have your attention, please? I'd like you to meet some very good friends of mine, some girls with a lot of talent, the three jazzy bells. OK, bells, ring out. <laughs> A doo dee doo doo doo, a doo dee doo doo, a silly old tune with a rhythm that's new. The words that mean nothing to me or to you. A doo dee doo doo doo, a doo dee doo doo, a right handed boogie that sounds rather blue. A doo dee doo dee doo dee doo dee doo, a musical strain that keeps going around. It sticks in your brain and you finally found the words that mean nothing. It's only the sound. A doo dee doo doo doo, a doo dee doo doo. There's no way to stop it. You simply must do. A doo dee doo dee doo dee doo dee doo. We're on a spot, we may get shot, for all this rot. It's got to go over, or doomed to a fall. There's only one thing that we all must recall. The best in the ball come from Carnegie Hall. The doo 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 doo
to a pole. There's only one thing that we all must recall. The best tunes of all come from Carnegie Hall. Those girls have a lot of talent. I'm glad you said that, because there's something I want you to do for them. What's that? Come on, darling, let's dance, and I'll tell you all about it. Wouldn't have anything to do with my owning a theater chain by any chance. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Good night. Such a nice party. Good night. Good night. Thank you for an entertaining evening, especially the ghost show. <laughs> I enjoyed your singing so much. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Frank. See you tomorrow, George. Good night. I'll see how the girls are getting along. All right, darling. Well, it's been quite an evening. Yes, it has. Uh, Mr. Baldrige, will you do me a favor? What is it? Let me uh, see the blue room. What on earth for? No particular reason, just to satisfy curiosity. Well, Larry, personally, I have no objections, but I don't know how Mrs. Baldrige would feel about it. Feel about what, dear? Larry wants me to open the blue room. Say, that's not a bad idea. I'd like to see it myself. Oh, please. Not after what happened in there. Well, why not, Mrs. Baldrige? Mr. Kirkland's suicide shouldn't condemn the room to solitary confinement forever. Mr. Randall, I've never believed it was suicide. What makes you say that? It was something that happened the morning of his death. But during breakfast, he was called to the phone, and he returned muttering to himself something to the effect that he didn't intend being blackmailed the rest of his life, and he was going to stop it once and for all. When I asked what he was talking about, he refused to answer me. That night, he was dead. Well, suicide is one way to avoid the clutches of a blackmailer, probably the only sure way. Yes, and don't forget, dear. When we broke in, we discovered the door and windows had been locked from the inside. Dad, the girls want to say goodnight to you. Excuse me, please. I want to thank you girls for coming down here tonight. Nan's been speaking to me about you. I feel sure if you take this card into our booking office tomorrow, they'll be able to do something for you. Gee, that's swell. We can't tell you how much we appreciate this. Not at all. I'm only sorry I can't offer to put you up for the night. Oh, mm -hmm. We wouldn't dream of imposing on you. Yeah, we're the home type. We can hardly wait to get home. Well, we'll be going, and thanks again. Good night. I'll see you to the door. Good night. It was wonderful to see you girls again, and the act made a big hit, too. Sure hope so. Thanks for everything, Nan. Oh, the return of Frankenstein. Where's the station wagon trailer? It's at the main gate, miss. I came for the bags. Bags? He's not only gruesome, he's insulting. Well, good luck, kids. Thank Let you me know much. how you make out. We sure will. Oh, sure. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, we did it. And we're still here to tell the tale. I won't feel safe, though, until we're home in bed. Oh, now, wait a minute. Don't be silly, kids. Tell me one thing. What could possibly happen to us now? Pardon me, but do you have a match? Oh, sure. Thank you very much. You're quite welcome. Sure. Nan, has Dr. Carroll ever talked to you about me? Oh, a lot of times. Impersonally, though. Why? Well, I think it'd be a good idea if we'd all call it a night. <laughs> What's that? the wind, it blew open the window. Oh, oh, well, I certainly hope nothing else happens tonight. Oh, I've got a splitting headache, Doctor. You better let me give you a sedative before you go to bed. I'll go with you, Mother. All right, dear. Be right along, darling. Good night. Good night. Good night. Offer you boys anything before you turn in? No, thanks. How about you? What's so intriguing? Hmm? Oh, I was thinking about the blue room. Oh, <laughs> so that's it. Strange how the human mind works. A flash of lightning, crash of thunder. The lights go out and a window blows open. And somebody's all ready to see a ghost come walking through a padlocked door. <laughs> Edwards. Yes, sir? 
What are you doing in there? Well, I happened to hear what was said downstairs, sir. I understood you wished to open up the room. I said nothing of the kind. I misunderstood, sir. I'm sorry. Steve! I'm over here. Stumbled over something and grabbed the curtains as I fell. Are you all right? <laughs> yes, a little on the dusty side. These spooks are very careless about their housekeeping. Well, they've had it all themselves for the past 20 years. If I'd had my way, I'd have cleaned it up long ago. So this is the blue room? Yeah, this is it. Mr. Baldridge? Yes? I'd like to sleep here tonight. What a strange request. Why? Just to prove your point. That to call this a ghost mansion is superstitious bunk. No, I don't think you should do it, Larry. Neither do I. Why don't you think so? Because I want to sleep here myself. Why don't you save those good ideas for the stories you write, Steve? All right, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll both spend the night here. Oh, no. I'm going to rough it alone. But I'll tell you what. If nothing happens tonight, if I don't catch pneumonia or something, you can sleep in here tomorrow night. What do you say, Mr. Borlidge? Well, apparently I have nothing to say about it. So I'll just go to bed. Okay, you win. I'll see you in the morning. I hope. <laughs> Seriously, Larry, I hope you'll be all right. Of course I will. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night, Steve. Good night. The blue room. Hmm. 8.30. I uh, guess everything went well last night. Last night? What do you mean? Mr. Dearden slept there. Didn't Mr. Bullrich tell you? You better have a breakfast tray ready in case Mr. Dearden should want it sent up to his room. Mr. Dearden, did you ring, sir? Mr. Dearden! What's the matter, Edwards? Well, I don't know, sir. Mr. Dearden rang a moment ago, but the door's locked, and he doesn't answer. Larry! If this is another of his jokes... What's wrong, Dad? Larry doesn't answer. Oh, I knew something would happen if he slept in there. Now, dear, nothing has happened yet. Larry, open the door! Give me the key, Edwards. I'm sorry, sir. I only had the key to the padlock. The key's on the inside. we better break in. All right. Slept in. Where is he? If I may venture the opinion, sir, it would appear that Mr. Dearden opened the window and and leaned out too far. Oh no! Please, mother. Now, now, you mustn't be upset. You say he just rang. We received the signal in the kitchen, sir. The indicator there still points to the blue room. Yes, Larry's disappeared. What? Hello, operator. Get me the police. Disappeared? Yes, this morning we... Hello? Inspector McDonald, please. And that's all you can tell me about his disappearance. You know as much about it as we do, Inspector. Who was in the house when Larry Dearden first discussed opening the blue room? Why, all of us and uh, Edwards, of course. Is that all? Well, what about those friends of yours, Nan? As I recall, they were in the house. The girls? Well, that's ridiculous. They didn't hear Larry ask to have the room opened. They didn't even know him. What girls? Some entertainers who were down for the evening. But they couldn't have had anything to do with it. You better give me their names and where they can be reached. Take this down, Curtin. We open Monday, first show at noon. Better get to the theater by 10 for rehearsal. Oh, we're halfway there already. <laughs> that must be them. Say. Are you girls the three jazzy bells? Uh-huh. Good news sure travels fast. We're from the police department. Why, I suppose you want us to appear at the policeman's benefit ball? Well, we might be able to consider it if you're out of jail in time. Oh, well, I think we could. 
Jail? Hey, what goes on here, officer? There's been some complaints. We were told to pick these girls up. Why, is the act that bad? But what have we done? Come on, let's get going. Wait a minute. We got a booking starting the day after tomorrow, and you can't do this to us. They'll be released in time to keep their engagement, won't they? Maybe they will, and maybe they won't. Oh, wait a minute, fellas. This is murder. Yeah. How did you guess? And you didn't hear any sort of noise after that? No. We picked them up and they was acting mighty suspicious, if you ask me. Well, nobody asked you. Say, you can't get away with this. What's the idea of dragging us way up here anyhow? It's always customary to return suspects to the scene of the crime. Well, that's different. Suspects? Well, what happened here anyway? Larry's disappeared. Larry? Who's that? You see, Inspector, they've never even heard of him. I'll handle this if you don't mind. Where did you go after you left this house last night? Right straight home. Yeah, we didn't stop for anything. That's right, Inspector. You can check up on us. We've never been in any trouble before. Inspector, I don't think these kids are any more guilty than I am. You may be right. Well, in that case, we'll be going along. Well, it's been nice knowing you. If you need any help, please feel free to call on us. Wait a minute. There's just one more thing. How come the gatekeeper didn't see you leave the grounds last night? Oh, well, we left by the side gate, the one that leads to the cemetery. Sure, we would have gone out the regular way, but after that, Ghost came up and asked for a match to light his cigarette. Ghost? And it was so scary when he tipped his derby. That you saw a ghost? That's right. And in the derby. And you lit a cigarette for him? Yes. That does it. Everybody stays in this house. Hannigan, see nobody leaves. Curtin, come with me. Excuse me. This sounds awfully serious, Nan. It is. One of our guests, Larry Dearden, slept in the blue room last night. This morning he is gone. Where'd he go? A question like that, asked at the right moment, is liable to revolutionize the detective business. You know, Nan, I've been thinking. Well, that's a good idea. What? Thank you. Well, we better figure out a way to get out of here in time for that first show. Do you really think it's all right for us to try and solve this case ourselves? Why not? The inspector's going to keep us here until they find the guy anyway. It may take 20 years before that happens. Yeah, and we can't afford to wait a minute over 19. Shh. They told me this is the blue room. Hey, I wonder why they call it the blue room. I don't know. Maybe it's because the last guy that was in there blue. Do you really think that room's haunted? No. If I did, I'd just be silly. <laughs> why don't you go in and see? I'm not that silly. Let's see what's down here. Let's try and be very quiet. Yeah, let's not get in any trouble. I'm allergic to jails. Who's the square? That's Mr. Kirkland, Nan's real father. He died in the blue room. You know, I'll bet there's something behind it. What, his death? No, the picture. Where'd that come from? I don't know. All I did was touch the picture. Like this. <laughs> Talking pictures. Come on. <laughs> I have a hunch that if we can solve the mystery surrounding your father's death, we'll have the answer to Larry's disappearance. Well, I've read all the testimony that was taken at the inquest. If there's anything you'd like to know... How many of the people who are in the house now were also present when your father was shot? Let's see. There was Mother and my stepfather. He was Dad's lawyer at the time. And Dr. Carroll and Edward. Last night, your mother said something very interesting. That she suspected your father was being blackmailed at the time of his death. Yes, I've heard him mention that before, but it was never proven. It strikes me that if any blackmailing was going on, well, the people most likely to be in possession of such damaging information would be the family doctor and the family lawyer. Are you implying that Dr. Carroll and my stepfather had any... I'm not implying anything. Now, look, Nan. Last night you asked me to help you. That's all I'm trying to do now. But I don't see what this all has to do with Larry. Well, just this. Suppose Larry found out who was blackmailing your father, or how your father was killed. Then the murderer would have to get rid of him, too, wouldn't he? You know, I've just realized something. If it were possible for someone to get into the blue room with the door and the windows locked, then it must be possible for someone to get out the same way. Exactly, Nan. And spoken like a true detective. <laughs> yes, now you've even got me doing it. No. Oh. oh, please let me go. I tell you, I didn't do it. You must believe me. Oh, it's no use. If he does know anything, he's not telling. Another good idea gone wrong. Uh, well, now what'll we do? My suggestion, madam, is that you release me from this chair. 
Yes, so that I can get to the phone and inform my lawyer of this outrage. Oh, gee, Edward, you wouldn't do that. After all, we were only trying to solve the mystery. Yeah, and anyway, all we did was grill you. Madam, I am not a hamburger. And furthermore, if it ever got out that I'd been subjected to the treatment of a common criminal, me, with a spotless reputation of 30 years, the perfect gentleman is gentleman. Oh, well, don't worry, Edwards. We'll keep it a secret, if you will. Sure, you can trust us, Edwards. No one outside of this room will ever know. I ain't even cited in blood. <coughs> I had any blood. I don't know. My mother warned me against people like you. She says acting is the devil's profession. Hey, are you trying to say actors are bad? In your case, decidedly, yes. We'll all have you know that we were good enough to sing in the same nightclub with Miss Nan. Oh, indeed. Oh, you don't believe us, huh? Well, let me tell you something. She came out and sang a very torchy ballad. Then we mm -hmm. came out and did a comedy number. Mm -hmm. In fact, we'll show you. <laughs> Walking on the piano keys, he's a job and goes to can make the most of his rhythmic tendencies. Oh, better watch out, someone's about out in the town with new kinds of rhythm. You may meet the boogie woogie boogie man. Better get wise, cause if he tries, he will soon have you beaten his rhythm when you meet the boogie woogie boogie man. Through the door if he really gets sore Cutting rugs on the floor by the hundreds or more As he sings he will pound with a horrible sound Like a hundred million drums If you see him once he really hash you Yes, that man can really hash you With his face he almost wrecks you Ooh, the boogie better get wise Cause if he tries he will soon have you beaten his rhythm when you meet the boogie 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 man. Someone's about haunting the town with new kinds of rhythm. You may meet the boogie woogie boogie man. Better beware, better take care, cause if you don't, you go along with him when you meet the boogie woogie boogie man. If you see him, he really hexa. Yes, that man can really vex him with his base, he almost wrecks him. Before you go to bed, I want to tell you this. You're all occupied the same rooms you slept in last night. No one is to leave his room till morning for any reason. Good night. Good night, Inspector. Good night. What about the girls, Inspector? They didn't sleep here last night. Oh, don't worry about us. We're planning to stay up all night. Why? Oh, nothing. Just getting in practice for five shows a day. <laughs> we don't want to miss anything in case anybody tries some funny business. Yeah, and don't think I, I couldn't stand some funny business. <laughs> Hey, this guy says he's got to see Dr. Carroll right away. Excuse me for intruding, sir. Yes, what is it? Dr. Carroll, my wife's going to have a baby and Dr. Mitchell's out of town. So I was wondering if you could, that is, if you'd be willing to... Oh, yes, yes, of course. Edwards, will you get my things? Yes. Where do you live? In the caretaker's cottage, sir, about a mile away. Hannigan. Yes, Chief? You'd better go along in case the doctor needs a little help. Right. Thank you, Inspector. Your subtlety is most gratifying. Too bad, Harry. Good night, Frank. Good night. Oh, 2.30 and all's well. 
Thank goodness for this coffee. I feel so wide awake. Well, why don't you go to bed and sleep it off? Well, why don't we all go to bed? Everybody's been asleep for hours and nothing's happened. Oh, no. We're going to stay up till morning if it takes all night. The name of the murderer is... The name of the murderer is... What are you doing that for? Well, every time you say that, somebody's supposed to take a shot at you. The name of the murderer is... What was that? It came from over there. Somebody's throwing pebbles at the window. Maybe somebody wants to get into the house. Oh, who'd want to get into this house? Well, there's one way to find out. Peggy, wait a minute. I'm not that anxious to know. I'd better open the window before he starts throwing rocks. Yeah, but suppose he starts throwing them after you open it. Oh. <coughs> Pardon me, lady. Which way to the cemetery? Th that way. <laughs> Thank you. Kindly. Like you've just seen a ghost. You can say that again. Can you imagine a ghost getting locked out of his own house? Maybe he lost his skeleton key. Give me some more coffee, will you, honey? This is cold. Drink hearty, gals. It looks like a long, long night. Say, this coffee tastes better. Why is that? After what I just saw, anything it tastes good. It is better, though. Who knows? Maybe something new has been added. What's that? Old Faithful again. Sounds like someone's in the hall. Come on, let's see who it is. You mean what it is? Well, around here, you never can tell. It may help to solve his disappearance. Okay, it's your funeral. Don't talk like that. Good night, girl. Good night. Good night. I guess I've had too much excitement. I'm starting to get drowsy. So am I. I'm certainly glad we have this coffee. Trouble is, you kids can't take it. Why don't you be like me? Here, yeah, have some more of this, and we'll all fall asleep. Yeah, I don't know if it's safer to stay awake and get murdered or go to sleep and just disappear. Maybe if we keep moving, we can walk it off, huh? Yeah. Did you ever have one of those days when nothing seems to go right? And nights, too. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? You said to keep moving, didn't you? Keep moving. Somebody hold me up, will you? I'm okay. We'll Who's going to hold us up? We'll sleep. I'm tired, too. Ready? Can't go to sleep now. No. Gotta stay up and catch the murderer. Yes. That's the murderer. It's the blue room again. You stay right here. What made you think I was going anywhere? Excuse me, sir, but I think you ought to know this. I just received a signal from the Blue Room. I left instructions no one was to sleep there last night. As far as I know, nobody did. Come on. but something's holding it. Shot through the heart. Know him? Yes. Mary Dearden. Oh, Frank! Go oh. <laughs> We better take her to her room. Well, at least we got the corpus delecti. Now all we need is a couple of suspects. <laughs>
What's the matter? There must be a homicidal maniac loose in this house. Well, he ain't dead. They're still breathing. Pour some of that coffee. Mm -hmm. Where am I? You're all right. Don't worry. Come on. Come on, wake mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. Darling. Hey. Oh, it's you, crumpled puss. We just found a body in the blue room. You girls wouldn't know anything about it, would you? The blue room? Poor Steve. I knew we shouldn't have let him go up there. What's that about Steve? And then it's all our fault. He insisted on spending the night in the blue room, and we didn't stop him. But it wasn't Steve we found up there. It wasn't. Do you know where this Steve Randall is now? No, I was looking for him myself, but I can't find him. Well, that's just dandy. One guy sleeps up there, and he disappears. Another guy sleeps up there, and he disappears. And what do we find instead? The body of the first guy. What do you make of that? Oh, uh, well, let's see. Uh, the first guy sleeps there. Then the second guy disappears. Then the second guy's by the first... Curtain. Uh, you better go out and search the grounds again. Anything wrong? Yes, Doctor, something is wrong. Steve Randall disappeared. No. And we found Dearden's body. Where? Up in the blue room. In the blue room? Yes. Do you want to go up and take a look at it, Doc? Well, yes, yes, of course. Were you with the doctor all night? Yeah, he wasn't out of my sight for a minute. Are you sure you didn't fall asleep at any time? <laughs> Fat chance I had to sleep. That guy's wife had triplets. Well, I guess that eliminates the doctor. Yeah, but now you got three new suspects. And what's the connection between Larry's death and Steve's disappearance? That question's been running through my brain all day. You don't think that Steve was jealous of Larry, do you? I've hardly known him long enough for that. Still, I can't help feeling that I'm at least partly responsible for Larry's death. Oh, no, you mustn't talk like that. But if only I'd been kinder to him. If I'd promised to marry him, maybe this wouldn't have happened. I'm afraid Larry could never have married you, Matt. Why not? Well, just have faith in what I'm saying. But I want to know, was there anything wrong with him? No, no, nothing. Then why shouldn't I have married him if I wanted to? Because Larry Dearden was your brother, your half-brother. Sam Kirkland, your father, was in love with Larry's mother years ago. I'm sorry to have had to tell you this, but under the circumstances, I, I thought you should know. I understand, Doctor. Thank you. Oh, it's no use, kids. I don't feel like rehearsing. Me neither. I feel lower than last week's salary. We have to, kids. Do you realize it's only 24 hours away from the opening and we haven't even got a dance routine set? So what? We'll never make the show. Nor at the rate this investigation is going. When we leave here, we can move right into the old lady's home. Oh, but things happen like that. If we hadn't come here in the first place, we wouldn't even have a job. Yes, and now that we did come and got the job and can't leave, why, it's the same as if we hadn't come to get the job we can't have. You speak English, too? <laughs> oh, come on, kids. Let's snap out of it. This isn't like us to let something get us down. Let's do something cheerful, like um, dance away your blues. Or every cloud must have a silver lining. Uh-huh. All I can think of is old man Moses dead. <laughs>
Betty. Anything for a gag. What are you doing, girl? There's an electric wire coming out of the carpet. Hey, I'll bet that's what's making the piano play. I think we've got something here. Let's follow it and see where it leads to. down the cellar. But we don't. Oh, come on. Now, don't tell me you're afraid of a little trip to the cellar. I don't have to tell you. My names are beating it out in Morse code. Look, the sooner we solve the mystery, the sooner we can get out of here. Yeah, but I don't want them to be playing sad music when I leave. Oh, don't worry. Nothing's going to happen to you. Come on. Well, all right, but I'm only doing this to avoid a scene. Shh. Let's not rush into this thing. Why don't we come back in a year or two? Be quiet. I found a gun. A gun. We'll bring it along. It might be just what we need. mother say about this? But I didn't do it. You didn't do what? What do you think, miss? Then who's been working these gadgets? I was only obeying orders. Orders? Why must it always be the butler? So you're the one who's been doing all this funny business. Only it isn't funny, bud. You know, they build jails for people like you, Edward. Disturbing the peace. That's what you've been doing. Yes. And how can we be sure you aren't the murderer? Murder is a hard word, Edward. And you're supposed to be the perfect gentleman's woman. We'd like to have an explanation about a lot of things. So would I. What are you girls doing down here? We've just been getting a confession from your butler, Mr. Baldrige. Confession? Mm-hmm. He's turned out to be quite the mystery man. Oh, no, sir. I'm innocent. All I did was to follow Mr. Dearden's instructions. Dearden? Yes, sir. He paid me to operate these devices. But why? I'm not sure, sir. But I believe he wanted to frighten everybody so that when he volunteered to sleep in the blue room, Miss Nan would be impressed by his bravery. Well, how come you're still working this stuff after he disappeared? Well, first, I thought that was part of his scheme. But when his body was found this morning, I decided I'd better dismantle the apparatus. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be knowing about that coffee that made us go to sleep last night, would you? I'm sorry, miss, but I couldn't take the chance of spoiling Mr. Dearden's plans. All right, everybody, don't touch a thing. We're all going upstairs and have a nice long talk. Oh, dear. Baldrige, you were Sam Kirkland's lawyer, weren't you? Yes, and his friend. And Mrs. Baldrige, did you and your first husband get along well together? Why, of course. What do you mean by that? How soon after his death were you two married? About a year. But I don't see what all this has to do with Mr. Baldrige. I'm convinced there's a connection between Kirkland's death and that of Larry Dearden. Well, I think you're way off the mark. Why don't you try and locate Steve Randall first? I agree with Frank, Inspector. Find Randall and you've got the key to your mystery. Yeah, why don't you find Randall? Where did you get this? I stumbled across it in the cellar. It was lying under the staircase. Why didn't you show it to me before? Because that's our clue. Yeah, why don't you go find your own? Does anyone here know whose gun this is? Why, it looks like my husband's, doesn't it, Frank? Yes, I think it does. Can't you be sure? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. One shot has been fired. What? And the bullet the coroner removed from the body of Larry Dearden was the same caliber as this gun. Well, that proves nothing. I'm sorry, Mr. Bullard. I'll have to hold you on suspicion of murder until I get a report from our ballistics expert. No. It's all too preposterous. It may be so, but it won't be the first time the man who sent for the police turned out to be the guilty party. You mean you're going to arrest him like a common criminal? Let's just call it a formality, Miss Kirkland. I think you're making a big mistake, Inspector. Now we've really done it. Can you imagine Mr. Baldrige going to jail? And we're the ones who are sending him there. Well, it's only one way we can square ourselves. We've got to solve this mystery tonight. How? By sleeping in the blue room. What? Oh, no, now let's not overdo this thing. Steve was right. The blue room is the answer to this whole thing. The only way to get the answer is to spend a night in there. 
Who is going to spend what and where? You know what's going to happen to us if we do. Tomorrow we'll disappear and they'll find Steve's body. Yeah, this could turn into a vicious circle. Well, suit yourselves, kids. But I'm going to spend the night there. Oh, Peggy, oh, we won't you let can't. you do it. No use arguing. I made up my mind. Okay, you win. But something tells me tomorrow there are going to be three new ghosts haunting this house. I hope Dick and Harry don't show up. Hey, I just got a terrific idea. What? Let's go back. No. Come on. What are you, a man or a mouse? Right now, I wish I was a mouse. isn't it? Yeah, now I know where the dust bowl went to. Why are you closing the door? You don't want anybody to get in, do you? I'm not worried about anyone getting in. It's about us getting out. You mean we're going to sleep in there? Can you suggest a better place to sleep? But that's where they found the body this morning. So what? Well, I don't like dead people. They're not my type. Oh, come on. Get in. Well, here goes oh, nothing. My. Are you sleeping with your robe on, dear? Sure, you never can tell who may drop in. I can't do it. Oh, force yourself. Come on. Ah! No, there. more. There's something in there. Something cold and sleeky. It's only my flashlight. Now, come on, get in and get to sleep. All right, but I'm still scared. Well, then you get over here, move in the middle, and then nothing can hurt you. All right, but I know I'll hate myself in the morning for this. Oh. Oh. Now, just relax and go to sleep. Good night. Good night. Pleasant nightmares. I wish you'd keep your hands to yourself. What are you talking about? I didn't touch you. Don't tell me. I felt it. All right, if I did, it was an accident. I'm sorry. Okay. Nervous enough. Well, you didn't have to hit me. I said I was sorry. I didn't touch you. Oh, don't give me that innocent act. What? Oh, will you quit arguing? I can see we have to keep you two separated. Now, come on, let me get in the middle. No! Oh, yes, you it. are. I don't want to go get at all here. I don't see oh, why I have to be the one to get the worst of it. Do nothing but well, fight my cat and dog. I'm getting her any sleep. I don't want to sleep here. Come in, I wouldn't want it to. Look, kids, you don't have to drag me into this. Now, don't tell me you're going to start something. Me start something? Well, I like that. I suppose that wasn't your hand crawling all over my face. It was not. Well, it wasn't me, so it must have been her. Oh, you're crazy. I didn't come anywhere near her. All the trouble with you is your right hand doesn't know what your left hand is doing. The trouble is I don't know what either one of them's doing. Oh, well, well, well that could be. Quiet. That's I quite very possible. Happy you two want to fight, leave me out of it. I am sleepy. Oh, Sometimes I wonder. <sighs> now what? I thought I heard something. Oh, lie back. You're dreaming. Didn't you hear a noise that wasn't here no. before? I mean, did you not hear a noise that was here before? I mean... What's eating you? I know. The stop clock. Huh? Mm -hmm. The clock stopped. Well, I wish you'd follow its example. Nothing doing. I'm going to set that clock ahead. Oh, what are you going to set it ahead for? In case a ghost comes up to me and says, your time has come. I want to be able to give him an argument. Oh. Oh, Betty, that's my fault. Oh, that's so oh, oh, Betty. Never grow up. Get some sleep.
Daddy, watch it. What's Daddy. the matter? What's the matter? What? what? A secret passage. Now we're getting someplace. Hey, are you game to go in there with me? In there? Sure. Without a chaperone. Why not? We've gone this far. We might as well finish the job. All right. But don't you think we'd better arm ourselves? That's not a bad idea. Hey, how about those fire irons? All right. Come on, Betty. What for? Oh, don't you want something? No, I'll just use my brains. <laughs> You're a dead pigeon. <laughs> Here. Thanks. I know just what's the matter. What's the matter? I don't know what I'm doing. Oh. Here's your flashlight. Okay, come on now. You go first. All right. Why doesn't somebody stop me? Wait. What's the matter? I just remembered. I gotta go and see about a sick friend. Who? Me. Oh, come on. Look. The opening's closing. Doing that. You mean we're trapped? Well, it ain't the other way around. We'll never get out of here alive. Oh, speak a little on. There must be some other way of getting out. Who's there? Dr. Carroll. What are you doing up so late? I couldn't sleep. Besides, I heard a noise. What about you? Well, I was sitting here smoking a cigarette, and I started toying with this lion's head. It seemed to be loose. Then I happened to turn it. And look. A secret passage. Well, where does it lead to? That's just what I mean to find out right now. This may provide the evidence that we're looking for. Well, let me go with you. Well, no, it may not be safe. You better wait here. It wasn't me, was it? treat you so roughly, Nan. I was only trying to protect you. Would you mind telling me what this is all about? Mac, he's trying to say something. I think I can tell the inspector everything he wants to know. I wish you would. Well, let's get here. When he found out that Sam Kirkland was his father, as well as the victim of the blackmail plot, he figured the two facts were related. And since Dr. Carroll was the only one who was aware of the paternity business, well, it seemed logical to assume that he was the blackmailer and ultimately the murderer. How do you know Larry Dearden doped all this out? Well, frankly, I don't, but it doesn't matter. The important thing is that Dr. Carroll was afraid Larry had stumbled across the truth. And when Larry insisted on sleeping in the blue room, Dr. Carroll figured that was his chance to get rid of him. So that night, he went up the secret passageway and shot Larry. 
The same way he murdered Kirkland 20 years before. But why had he wanted to kill Father? Because your father refused to be blackmailed any longer. That's very interesting. But how do you fit into all this? Well, last night in the blue room, I discovered the passageway behind the clock, and also Larry's body. I decided to leave the corpse out in the open as a sign to the killer that I was wise to him. I figured that anyone who came after me would have a guilty knowledge of the secret of the blue room. But, Mr. Randall, we found you here, and we're certainly not guilty of any of the crimes. Why, you might have shot us in cold blood. That's why I tried to scare you out of the blue room, so you wouldn't get in the way. We've done a nice job of reconstruction. I guess this finishes your book for you. Too bad I won't be there for the happy ending. Say, did you see Steve and Nan give each other that certain look across the breakfast table? I'll bet we'll be going to a wedding pretty soon. Not if it's in that house, we won't. Why not? The mystery's solved, isn't it? Yeah, but there's still a lot of queer things going on. Things that no one can explain. I know what you mean. Boy, I know I wouldn't go back there if they gave me a million dollars. You and me both. Oh, this is the end. Thank you.